Microsoft Power BI is a powerful tool for reporting and analysis. It's capable of consuming data from many different data sources and rendering reports and dashboards in different environments. It allows you to share the business benefits of your data to the rest of your organization. In this video, I'm going to go over the basic functionality of Microsoft Power BI, and I'll cover the following aspects. Capacities, or the underlying infrastructure, CPU and memory. Workspaces, which serve to group the following three fundamental building blocks of Power BI. Data sets, or the data for visualizations. Reports, for visualizing the data in ways beneficial to the business. And dashboards, which allow for a quick, contextual snapshot of the data. Power BI is not one service, but rather it consists of many parts. The main parts are Power BI Desktop, which is a Windows desktop application and allows a rich report building experience. The Power BI Service, which serves reports and dashboards and contains a user interface that allows you to manage Power BI. And finally, there are native Power BI mobile apps for Windows, iOS, and Android devices that allow a live view of Power BI reports and dashboards. Some other Power BI parts of note are Power BI Report Builder, which gives you a more fine-grained control and report layout, including paginated reports, and Power BI Report Server, which is a server you can run on-premises to serve your Power BI reports. You will use Power BI differently depending on your role in your organization. Your role will determine what permissions you'll have in Power BI as well as what licenses are applicable to you. You're a business user if you consume reports and dashboards. Business users use the Power BI service online, either via a browser or mobile device. A business user does not build content, but rather consumes it. You'll either need a Power BI Pro license, or your organization can share content with you via a Power BI Premium subscription. Report creators create content for business users, such as reports and dashboards. They work primarily with Power BI Desktop, a free application for content creation. Report creators need a Power BI license to publish their reports to the Power BI service. Then there are enterprise report creators. Unlike report creators who publish reports primarily for online consumption, enterprise report creators create reports that are ideal not just for online, but also for printing. They are often called pixel-perfect reports because the creators have a fine-grained control over the layout. Enterprise report creators can create paginated reports, where visualization content such as tables can span multiple pages dynamically, which aids in printing reports. Administrators are those who control the settings of how Power BI works, and they interact with the Power BI admin portal. And finally, developers use languages such as JavaScript to create their own visuals, thus extending the abilities of Power BI report and dashboard visualizations. One main Power BI concept is capacities. An administrator would set up the capacities for your reports and dashboards, which means they would define what resources your reports and dashboards run on. This infrastructure is measured in V cores, which you can think of as virtual server specifications, defining the CPU and the storage capabilities. By default, Power BI gives shared capacity, meaning that your various reports and dashboards run on a shared pool of resources. With the proper Power BI subscription, you can define dedicated capacities, meaning your reports and dashboards run on their own dedicated resources. Compared to shared resources, dedicated resources can promise more consistent performance. All your Power BI content is delivered via the capacities chosen. Workspaces are containers for your Power BI objects, such as reports, dashboards, and datasets. By default, your Power BI subscription will include a workspace called My Workspace in which you can store your own personal content. You can also share your dashboards and reports you create in your personal workspace if you choose. Other workspaces are meant to share content with others in your organization 
and to facilitate collaboration. You need a Power BI Pro license in order to create additional workspaces. Another thing you can do with workspaces is publish what are called apps. An app is a read-only collection of dashboards and reports. The dashboards and reports can contain interactive elements, such as letting the user filter the data, but they can't be modified by others. The consumers of the apps cannot add or delete reports from the app, for instance. You can share apps with people who do not have Power BI Pro licenses, making it easy to distribute to a larger audience. All of the content in Power BI is based on datasets. This is data that you either import into Power BI or data that you connect to directly, such as a live streaming dataset. Each dataset in Power BI represents a single physical source of data, such as a Cosmos DB database or a SQL Server instance. Datasets are shown as part of your workspace in the Power BI service interface under the Datasets tab. One of the powers of Power BI datasets is that they're discoverable, which makes them shareable and allows anyone with the admin, member, or contributor role in Power BI to reuse them. This collaboration means that common datasets can be reflected organization-wide. Now let's dig into one of the main content types of Power BI, the report. Reports consist of one or more pages of visualizations. Visualizations simply visualize data in a specific way, and they take on many forms, such as line charts, maps, and tree maps. Tables are also a form of data visualization. Using Power BI Desktop or Power BI Report Builder, you can build your own reports from scratch. Developers can even create custom visualizations to use on your report. Power BI can also create reports automatically from datasets, such as Power View Sheets in Excel. A report has two views, Reading View and Editing View. By default, reports will open in Reading View, and if you have the permissions required to edit reports, you'll be able to click a button to go to Editing View and Edit Reports. Dashboards are built in Power BI Service. You can build your own and you can also share your dashboards with others. Report contents, as well as Q&A contents, can be pinned to a dashboard. These pinned contents are called tiles, and a dashboard can consist of any number of tiles, organized in almost any way you wish. Dashboards can also contain widgets, which are external contents such as pictures or videos from a URL. Dashboards are useful for highlighting the most important visualizations in an accessible manner. Many people like to create their own customized dashboards to see the data they personally care about in a layout that they prefer. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to load a data set from Excel into Power BI. And then I'm going to show you how to use relationships in a Power BI model to optimize the use of that data for the Power BI report visuals. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a data set, which I have opened up in Excel. Now I have two sheets. The first one is person, and it has the following fields. User ID, which is just a sequential ID, a first name and a last name, and then the person's age. Now in the second sheet, I have another table called student, and it has the same user ID, and we have an enrolled field. Some of the people might not be in school currently, so they're not currently enrolled. And then we have a student ID and their average grade. So in Power BI, these two sheets are going to represent two different tables. So I'm just going to go to Power BI. I'm using Power BI Desktop. And I'm going to click on Import Data from Excel. And I'm going to choose my Excel sheet. Now the first thing what I have to do is close the Excel sheet because it won't import it if it's open and being used. Okay, so now it's ready to load the data. And as you can see, it shows the sheets. And I can choose these sheets. And you can see the data on the right. And I can choose to load both of them in as tables. So I'll click Load at the bottom. Okay, so now it's loaded. On the left, I have the option of going to Report View, Data View, 
or model view. So I'll go to data view first off. And you can see on the right hand side I have my two tables, person and student. And if I expand them I can see all of the fields. And if I click on them I can actually see the data. Now if I go to the model view, I have them as two objects in my model, person and student. Now an interesting thing is that there's a relationship here. That's what this line between the objects means. And if I highlight it, it shows that the relationship is on user underscore ID. So the reason this is here is because when loading the data, Power BI Desktop recognized that this is a common field and recognized that it's probably a relationship field. Now you can modify this by clicking Manage Relationships on the top ribbon, and you'll see that you can add new relationships or you can edit the current relationships. Now I'm just going to leave that relationship there, and we're going to see in a little bit what it does and what happens if you remove it. But for now we have person and student associate. So I'm just going to go to the report view now. And you can see in my fields on the right I have person and I have student. So one thing I can do is I can combine these tables into a third table that represents a person with all their student fields. So why don't we do that? I'm just going to go to data on the left. And I'm going to click home in the top window. And I'm going to choose Transform Data. Now I now get a new window here that I'll just drag over here. And you can see that I have my person and student tables on the left. And the user ID field is highlighted yellow because it's a relationship between the two. Now there's an option here on the ribbon at the top that says Combine. And if I click that, there's an option to Merge Queries. And if I click that, I'm going to choose Merge Queries as New. So what this is going to do is create a new third table that basically consists of the two tables combined. This can be useful if you only want one table to tie to the visuals in the report instead of two. So I'm going to select, as the first table, it's already selected as person. And the second table I'm going to select as student. And then I can highlight the field that I want to merge by. So I'm going to highlight user ID. And at the bottom, there's a join kind. I want a left outer join, which is I want to get everything from the first table and I want only the matching fields from the second table. So I'll click OK. And now on the left under queries, I have a third query called merge one. And you can see in the center here, it's the merged fields of the two tables. Now there's a field called student and it just says table. I want to expand that. So I'm going to click the little button with the arrows on the header, and it's going to allow me to expand it into different fields. Now I don't want the user underscore ID field because I've already got it as part of the person table that I've merged with. So I'll uncheck user underscore ID, but I'm going to keep the other three, enrolled, student ID, and average. Click OK, and it'll expand that. So you see I now have those three fields expanded. I'm going to also rename that query. So on the left, I'm going to right click and choose rename on merge one. And I'm going to call it person underscore student. Basically, it's a merge between those two tables. So now I have a single table that represents all of the fields that I would like out of those two tables. So at the top in the ribbon, I'm going to click close and apply. So on the right hand side, you can see I have person underscore student now. And if I expand that, I can see all of the fields and I can see the data on the left hand side. Now if I go back to my model, you will notice here that I now have a third object in my model, person underscore student. It has relationships to both person and student. The relationship is a user ID. So now let me go to the report view and I'm going to create a visual. At the top I'll click new visual and this visual is going to be a bar chart. What I'll do is I'll drag user ID as the axis for this chart. And the values for this will be the age. So this will be the age of the users by user ID. I can also add to the tooltip, I'll add the first name and last name to the tooltip. That way when you hover over a bar, you see the first name and last name. This is Samuel Branson. This is Greg Smith. So notice what I did here is I did not take this from person underscore student. I actually took it from the person table. 
And I did that on purpose because I want to show you something in a little bit. So I've created this bar chart of the age of people by their user ID. Now I'm going to create another new visual. Click new visual at the top. I'll drag it over, make it the same size roughly as the other one. And this time, instead of taking fields from the person table, I'm going to take fields from the person underscore student table. So here I'm also going to use user ID. So I'm going to drag user ID as the axis. And I'm going to choose something different. I'll choose the student average as the values. And I will put first name and last name on the tooltip again so we can see the first and last name. So now we can see there's Larry Daniels has a student average of 88. Now, something interesting, if I click on one of these on the new column table, notice that the other column table changes. So it highlights the same user. This is Samuel Branson. And on the other chart, this is Samuel Branson. The reason why they highlight together is because of that relationship between the person table and the person student table. They have a relationship by ID. So it knows that when I click on a certain user ID in one chart, it should highlight it in the other chart. So this is useful behavior in a report. Someone using the report can highlight particular data and see the other visuals adjust to show that data. Now, if I go back to model, I just want to show that if I break that relationship, so I have a relationship here between person and person student. I can right click on it and hit delete. They asked me if I really want to do that. Yes, I'll click delete. Now there's no relationship between those two data sets. So if I go back to the report, now when I highlight one, it doesn't highlight the other. They work independently. So in conclusion, I've just shown you how to get data in Power BI from an Excel document and then manage the relationships between the resulting model objects to optimize the use of the data in the Power BI report visuals. In this video, I'm going to create a table in Azure Table Storage and then consume it as a database in Power BI, displaying the data as a chart on a report. So I'm starting here in the Azure portal and I just want to show you the resource group I have set up called Power BI Demo. And inside I have a standard storage account, which I'll open up now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table in Table Storage, and we're going to consume it with Power BI. So I'm just going to click on Tables and Overview. I'm going to click the plus table at the top, and I'll just call this Power BI Demo Table. So Power BI Demo, OK. And now I'm going to go to Storage Explorer, and under Tables, I have my Power BI Demo Table. And I'm going to add just a handful of rows so that we can use for data. So I'm going to start off with a partition. You need a partition key and row key. So I'm just going to give it a value. It has to be unique. And I'm going to add a few fields. The first one is going to be name. It's going to be a string. This is going to be very simple. I'm going to give the name George. It's going to be a table of names and ages. Add property. Create an age. And that's going to be an int32. And let's say George is 23. Now click insert. So that's added. And I will add another one. This time the row key will be two just to make it unique. And this will be Sally, who's 45. Insert. Click add again. It's one and four. And the name will be Peter, who is 27. Insert. And one last one, I'll add Pauline, who is 56, and click Insert. So now I have four records with name and age. So we're going to use Power BI to consume this. Now there's two versions of Power BI. There's Power BI Online, and there's Power BI Desktop. Now Power BI Online is really great for showing dashboards. Power BI Desktop is best for creating reports and consuming data sets. So I'm going to open up Power BI Desktop right here. And the way that I bring that data into here is I click on Get Data. Now what it's going to do is it's actually going to copy the data 
to Power BI. There's actually two ways you can consume data. You can either copy it into Power BI as a new data set, or you can consume it live. Now we're just going to copy it. So I'm going to click Common Data Sources More. And you can see there are a lot of possible data sources. There's Excel. You can copy just from a text file, from a JSON file, all sorts of things. There's basically file copying. There's databases, SQL Server database, all sorts of databases. So here's all the different Azure resources, and this is what we're going to use. So we'll use Azure Table Storage. Click that and hit Connect. Now I need a few things in order for it to know where my Azure Table Storage is. First one is the URL. So if I go back to Azure, and on my storage account, if I go to Properties, then under Table Service, there's a Table Service URL. So I just copy that, and going back to Power BI Desktop, I will paste that in. OK. Now it asks me for an account key to connect. So if I go back to Azure, and I go to Access Keys on the left, so I clicked on Show Keys, and now I can see the keys, and I'm just going to copy the key, and now I'll go back to Power BI and paste that account key. Click Connect. So now I'm connected, and I can now see my table, Power BI Demo. I'm going to check that, and I can see the contents. Now, notice one thing. I don't see my name and age. I see something that says Content, and it says Record. Now, I don't want that. I want the age and name to be available. So at the bottom, I have the choice of clicking Load, which would load the data into Power BI as is, with a field called Content, with the record. But I want to change that, so I'm going to click Transform Data first. And what I get now is a Transform screen. And I can click a little Separation button above Content here. And that will give me my actual fields, name and age. And I'm going to click OK, and this will separate it into content.name and content.age. So those are now fields that I can use. So I'll click Close and Apply. And now it's finished, and now I have my data set. So let me show you on the left here, there's some buttons. The top one is Report, and that's what we're looking at right here. The middle one is data sets, and if I click on it, I can see my data that I've brought into Power BI. And below that is model, and if I click on model, we're not going to use model right now, but you can see that my Power BI demo data set is a model. And it has properties, or fields, and if I brought in other data sets, I could connect them together so that they can be queried together, if that's appropriate. So going back to report, I'm now going to create a chart on my report, and I'm going to pull in that data. So I think I'll create just a bar chart. And what I want is a bar chart of the people and their ages. So you see on the right-hand side, I have content.name. I can drag that into axis, and that will become my x-axis. And then I can grab content.age and drag it into values. Now something interesting happens here. Notice that we have four bars that are the same size. And it's very small. Let me make it larger here. At the bottom it says George, Pauline, Peter, and Sally. But their ages all say 1. So why are all the ages saying 1? Well, what's happening here is that the age that was brought in, which remember was an integer, or int32, in the table in Azure was transformed into a field that's actually not a number. And that's why that's happening. So we can go back to dataset and we can change that. So if I click on content.age, the data type at the top says text. And I can change that to a whole number. And it warns me that it's changing the contents of the dataset. So that's changed. So I can now go to Report, and now what I will do is I will change that. So now what I can do is I can change this under Values. It says Count of Content.Age. I will take that out, and I will replace it with the number. And now you notice that it's using it numerically. 
So the y-axis is the age. So we have Pauline is 56, Sally is 45, Peter is 27, and George is 23. So in conclusion, Power BI can import data from many possible data sources, making it a powerful reporting and dashboarding tool. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a Power BI dashboard. Where Power BI reports are typically detailed, in-depth reviews of data, dashboards are meant as single-page snapshots of the most important data, and they're meant to be shared either on a desktop or mobile screen. So I'm going to start in Power BI Desktop, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Power BI report and then we're going to create a dashboard online from that report. So I'm going to start with a sample data set. And I'm just going to create a simple report. I'm going to have a couple of visuals in it. I'll start off with a pie chart. And we'll make this pie chart by product. And we'll go with sale price. So we have a breakdown of product by sale price. I'm also going to add another visual, which is a bar chart. And my bar chart will be by month, and it will be the gross sales per month. So that's going to be my very simple report, just two visuals. I'm also going to add a filter on the page. So I'll filter by country. That way, if I want to see the data of Canada, I can click on Canada. And I'm actually going to choose require single selection. So you just choose one country. So you can choose the country and you can see the details of that country. So I'm going to publish this report. I'm going to click publish at the top. Do you want to save your changes? Yes, I do. Save. And I'll save it to a file called demo. And publish to Power BI. I'm going to choose my workspace. Click select. And that's successful. So now I can open that in Power BI. So here's my report in Power BI. And you'll see on the right, I have my filters. So I have the one filter, so I can filter these by country. In this case, I'll have it filtered by France. And the way that I create a dashboard out of this, first of all, I'll show you where my dashboards are listed. On the menu on the left under workspaces, I have my workspace. And if I open that up, you'll see it has dashboards, reports, workbooks, and data sets. So I've published the demo report, it's shown here, and it came along with the demo data set. But there's no dashboards yet. So the way I create a dashboard is go to one of my visuals and click the little pin at the top right. And it'll ask pin to dashboard. Now I can either pin it to an existing dashboard, but I don't have any yet, or a new dashboard. So I'm going to Call this Demo Dashboard. And I'll click Pin. That will automatically create the dashboard. So now under My Workspace and Dashboards, you see I have a Demo Dashboard. If I click on that, this is my dashboard. I have a tile which shows me my visual. And I can drag that around and put it in different parts of my dashboard, on different parts of the screen. I can also click the ellipsis and choose Edit Details. And I can change the title or subtitle of the visual, or I can click display title and subtitle, and I can turn it off. I can also add a custom link. Now, you can make a click on this tile go to any place by putting in a custom link. By default, it'll go back to the report it came from. So if I click on this tile, it just opens up the report. So if a user is looking at your dashboard and they want more information, they could go to the report simply by clicking that. Now let me add my other visual to it. So I'll add the gross sales by month by clicking the pin at the top. And now I can pin it to the existing dashboard or create a new one. I want to pin it to the existing dashboard. So click pin. And now if I go to my demo dashboard, they're both on here. And I can drag them and put them in different locations. I can put the gross sales under the sale price. I can also resize them so I can make them fit the screen. Another thing you can do is you can adjust your dashboard for how you want it to look on a mobile device. So if I go up to the main menu at the top and I click edit, I can choose mobile view. And you can see I can independently adjust this 
as to how I want it to look on a phone. And then at the top right, I can go back from phone view to web view. So you can have independent layouts. Now, something you might have noticed is that there is no country filter on here. I had a country filter on my report. So dashboards are not typically filtered. If I go to the report, I can filter by country. And if I change this to Canada, the data will change. But if I go back to my dashboard, the data has not changed because I basically pinned the data for France here. Now if I go back to demo, now that I've changed to Canada, I can now pin another version of my pie chart, for instance, and pin it to the existing dashboard. And now when I go back to my dashboard, I have three. And I can probably, I could change the title of this one by going to Edit Details, and I can call this Sale Price Canada. And if I highlight the other one and click Edit Details, I can call that Sale Price France. Okay, so it's a snapshot of the data with the filters that you applied on the report. Now, another thing you're going to notice with dashboards is how they're designed to be shared. So at the top, you can click Share, and you can share with different users and groups. You can also chat about it in Teams, or you can comment on it directly. So a dashboard is really about communicating a snapshot of the most important data to other people. So in conclusion, I've just shown you how to create a Power BI dashboard. By first creating a Power BI report in Power BI Desktop, publishing that report, and then in the Power BI UI, pinning visuals to the dashboard. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate creating a paginated report in Power BI. This is done using the standalone Power BI Report Builder application, which you can download for free online, and which is distinct from the Power BI Desktop application, which creates non-paginated reports. Now I'm going to start with Power BI Desktop, which does not create paginated reports, because I want to show you the difference between this and the paginated reports of Power BI Report Builder. So I'm going to start off here by clicking Try a Sample Data Set. And I'm going to click Load Sample Data, and this just gets some sample data into the system. Okay, I'm going to choose in the Navigator the Financials table and click Load. And this is just some sample data that you can play around with in Power BI Desktop. And I'm going to use a table because it demonstrates pagination. And I will give it a couple of fields for values. We'll start with country and we'll go with gross sales. And I'm going to set the gross sales to don't summarize. What this will do is it'll give us a lot of records. So we have hundreds of records in this table. So the non paginated reports that Power BI Desktop creates do not paginate this data. What that means is it's going to be impossible to show all of this data in the report. Really, non-paginated reports are designed to be displayed on a screen or on a device, not necessarily printed out. So if I go to File and I go Export and I export it to PDF, you'll see what I mean. Now, when I take a look at the PDF of this, it's taken a snapshot of the table on the PDF. And you notice it's only one page. And this is clearly not all of the records in my table. It's only the records that were visible on the screen. So what I want is I want a report that paginates. In other words, it shows pages of information, if necessary, to show all of these records. So I'm just going to switch here to the other application, Power BI Report Builder. Now, the great thing about Power BI Report Builder is it gives you fine control over layout. You can see that it has rulers on the top and on the left here, so you can lay out components exactly where you'd want them on a printed page. So let me create a table here, and I'll show you the difference between paginated and non-paginated behavior. So I'll just go to File, and I'll hit New. And there's a wizard here, so I'm going to choose Table or Matrix Wizard. And I'll click Next. Now I happen to have a SQL Server instance set up on my local machine, and it has a table that we can use. So I'm going to click New Data Source. And under Select Connection Type, I'm going to choose Microsoft SQL Server. 
I'm going to click build to build a connection string and I'll just fill in the name of my local database and I can use Windows Authentication. I can choose a database which is paginated report demo. Click OK and click OK. Now I can click Next and I can choose the sales table. It's a subset of the same data we were looking at in the other table. Next. And I can drag these into the values field. Click Next. And click Next. And Finish. And I have very fine grain control over it. I can make it full screen like this. And I will give it a title of Gross Sales. And now at the top left in the ribbon, if I click Run, I can see sort of what it's going to look like. You can see that I have a page of data. And at the top, I have pagination controls. I have navigation here. I can go to the next page and the next page. So there's four pages of records. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here, and I'm going to send this off to PDF. So if I click Export, I can export to PDF. And I'm just going to save it here. And then what I'll do is I will open it up in my documents. And you will see the difference. So this is what this PDF looks like. It has 13 pages. And unlike the non-paginated one, the records here go from page to page. All of the records are here, so it's paginated that information. So we got all the rows in this report. Whereas in the other report, we couldn't see all of the rows. So that's the difference between pagination and non-pagination in Power BI. So in conclusion, I've shown you how to create a paginated report in Power BI Report Builder. And I've discussed how paginated Power BI reports give you more fine control over layout, and they also paginate large data sets such as tables, so their contents are fully accessible and spread across multiple pages if necessary. In this video, I'm going to step through creating a simple two-page report in Power BI, and then I'm going to publish that report to a Power BI workspace for others to see. Now the first step here, and I'm in Power BI Desktop, the first step is to be logged in, because you can't publish anything unless you're logged in with a Power BI account. Now the next thing I'm going to do is load the sample data set. This is just a data set that's offered that can get you started click load sample data and I'm going to choose the financials table click load okay so our data is loaded I'm going to start off on the first page of the report with a pie chart and I'll make this a little bigger and there's some nice guides that allow you to center that get it to the right place I'm going to add a text box on top as my own custom title so what I'm going to do for data here is I'm going to have gross sales by country I'll have to make that text a lot bigger so we can see it. Okay, and I'll center that. There we go. I'll make sure that's centered. Now we want gross sales by country. So I'm going to highlight the pie chart and drag in gross sales as the values and the country as the legend. I'll make that even bigger. Center that. And just move the text a little bit there we go now i also want a filter on this i want to be able to filter the country so i'm going to drag the country under filters on this page i could also put the filter on all pages but we'll just go by page in this case and by doing this you see when i choose different countries i can see them on the pie chart so that's going to be useful in our report to be able to allow users to filter the data so that's going to be my first page of the report. I'm going to add a page at the bottom by clicking the plus for new page. And for this page, I'm going to add a line chart. And I'm going to also add another text box for a title. And this title is going to be profit per month. And I'll make that much bigger so we can read it. And I'll center that. Okay. So now we want profit per month. So on the line chart, I'm going to have to add an axis, and that's going to be the month name. 
and then we want profit as the value. So it goes October, December, September, June, it jumps months, but it shows the profit as a line. Now I also want to do this by country. I want this filterable by country. So again, I'm going to add a filters on this page. I'm going to add country. And this way, if I click a country, I can see the profit line for that country. I can also combine them. So that is my simple report. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish this. So there's a button up in the main ribbon that says publish. Click on this. Do you want to save your changes? So you normally save your changes locally. And now I get to choose a workspace. Now I only have one workspace in my Power BI and it's my workspace. So I'm just going to choose that and hit select. Okay, I already have one called that. That's okay. I'll just replace it. Success. So I can click open my demo in Power BI and I'll click that. And we'll take a look at what the report looks like in Power BI. So here's my report. It's got two pages, as you see. Now I could have given the pages more useful names, but I just left them as page one and page two. So here we can see gross sales by country. And we can also see the filter on the right. There's a country filter. Now we could have added more filters, but we have a basic country filter. I can see Canada's details. I can see I can add different countries and we can see how their gross sales match up. So if I go to page two, I can see the profit per month. And again, I have a country filter. So here's Germany's profits per months. Okay, so there's the profits per months. So that's really all there is to it, is you simply publish it to a workspace and then it's available. Now there are permissions on who can see this, who can view it, who can edit it. So if you have a Power BI Pro account, then you can create workspaces and assign roles to those workspaces to users and groups. Most users will require the viewer role to view the reports in the workspace. But there are also admin, member, and contributor roles, which allow more control over the report, including editing it. So in conclusion, I've shown the creation of a simple report from start to end, and I've also shown you how to publish the report to a workspace. I've also briefly discussed assigning roles to users and groups on a workspace to control their ability to view and edit the report. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the interactive features of Power BI reports. Specifically, I'm going to show how interactive filters are shared by visualizations that use related data and how to implement drill through functionality. So here I am in Power BI Desktop, and to do this, I'm going to load up a sample data set. Now I'll choose the financials table. Okay, so for my first page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pie chart. And I'm going to make this pie chart by country. So I'll drag country on there. And I'm going to make it gross sales by country. So you can see the United States of America has about 27 million. Canada, around 26 million. France are on 26 million as well. So it shows us per country. Now I'm also going to add another visual here and that's a bar chart. So this bar chart is going to break down that gross sales by month. So I'm going to drag month name as the axis and it's going to be gross sales in the values section. And now we want that by country. So I'm going to drag country in as the legend. So you can see right now it's showing all of the countries and it breaks it down in the bar chart. Now the first interactive feature I want to show you is selective filtering. So if I choose one of the countries in the pie chart, say Mexico, you'll see that it highlights Mexico on the other chart. Now let's say I want to see distributed in the pie chart just the gross sales for October. Well, if I click the top of the bar for October, and then I hold down my control button and click the other parts of the bar, I can highlight the entire bar for October, and I can see it represented on the gross sales by country pie chart. So you can see that I see my gross sales in the tooltip, but I also see what's highlighted. So France had a total gross sales 
for the whole year of over 26 million, but in October they had 6 million. So I can use this interactive filtering in order to see the data that I want to see. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to use drill through. So at the bottom of visualizations on the right, you see it says add drill through fields here. Now I'm going to create another page. So I'm going to call this page gross sales. So at the bottom, I'm going to right click and go rename page on the tab. And I'm going to call it gross sales. And then I'm going to create a new page by clicking the plus on the tabs. I'm going to right click and rename that page gross sales for country. And what I'm going to set up here is that going back to the gross sales page, I want to be able to drill through. And what drill through means is to choose a filter on one page and go to another page or another report altogether to see more information about the same data or possibly the same data shown in a different way. So what I want to do is when I right click on the gross sales page, I want to be able to choose to drill through to the gross sales for country and see just the gross sales for that country. So if I go to the gross sales for country tab, I'm going to do that again with a bar chart. And we're going to set it up much like the bar chart on the gross sales page. It's going to be by month. And it's going to be gross sales. And the country is going to be used as the legend. And the difference is I'm going to add country to the drill through at the bottom. So if I scroll down visualizations, I'm going to drag country into add drill through fields here. And it's going to be left as used as category. So what this means is that another page will be able to drill through to this page and specify the country to see. So if I go back to gross sales, now on this page, if I right click now on my pie chart, say for Mexico, I now have an option to drill through. This is a new option that's just appeared because I've turned on drill through on the other page. And you see it gives me the option of gross sales for country. So I can click on that. And this is now filtered for Mexico. You see I'm now seeing the Mexican gross sales. There's also a button that was automatically added when I created this as a drill through. And it is a going back to the previous page. So if I hold down control and I press this button, I can go back to the previous page. So that's drill through. It basically allows you to send filter information to another page and see that page in the context of that filter. So let's publish this and see what this looks like online. I'm going to click publish at the top, save my changes. I'll just call this demo. And I'll publish it to my workspace. Hit select. Okay, so success. It's published to the Power BI. So I can click the open demo.pbix and Power BI link. So here we are. I have it opened up. And on the left, I have my pages, gross sales and gross sales for country. So I can flip back and forth. But I can also drill through from gross sales to gross sales for country. So this time I'll choose Canada. I'll right click on Canada and I'll choose drill through to gross sales for country. And now I see the details for Canada and the gross sales. If I click the button at the top, I can go back. When I'm in the report in the UI like this, I don't have to hit control to go back. I can just click the button. Okay, I can also do it on the other visual here. If I right click on one of these months and I go drill through, it will also drill through to gross sales for country. This time I only see the month that I chose. So it'll put it in context. Now this is just December for the United States of America. Again, I'll do that again if I go back and I choose, let's say, July, and I choose it just for Canada. Right click, drill through, I want to see more information. It just shows me in a different visualization what July looked like for Canada. Just like in Power BI Desktop, I can left click on any of these and I can see them selected in the other visualization. Okay, I can also control click multiple ones and I can see that highlighted on the other visualization. So in conclusion, I've shown you some of the interactive features of Power BI reports, interactive filtering, and also drill through functionality. 
Power BI offers a rich set of visualizations that can make your reports visually pleasing as well as highlight the important data in an easy to understand way. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the visualization features of Power BI. So we're going to start off here with a sample data set in Power BI Desktop. So I'll click Try a Sample Data Set, Load Sample Data, and I'll choose the Financials table, click Load. Now the first thing I'm going to do is rename this default page. So at the bottom on the tab, it says page one. I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to call this profit versus gross sales. And you'll see why in a second. Now I'm going to use this page as a sub page that's going to be filtered by country. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a card on the page. And what a card does is it shows a single value. So the value I'm going to show is country. Now by default, it shows the first value in the list of countries. So it shows Canada. That will change when we set up our filtering. But I wanted to say the name of the country, but not the category, which says first country. So in visualizations, I'm going to click on format and I'm going to turn off category. And that will disappear from the card. So now it just gives me the country. The next thing I'm going to add is a gauge. Now what a gauge visualization does is it shows you a value compared to a maximum and a minimum. Now the value that I wanna show is profit. So I will drag profit from fields onto the value under visualizations. And you'll see the gauge shows me the value total for profit, it's a sum, 16.89 million. And it automatically puts it as half the gauge because the gauge does not have a minimum or a maximum yet. By default, the minimum is zero and I'm gonna leave it at that. But for the maximum, I'm gonna use gross sales. So I'm gonna drag gross sales from fields under maximum value under visualizations. So now when you take a look at the gauge, you see that it's showing me that out of the total gross sales of roughly 127.93 million, 16.89 million is profit. So I'll leave that gauge there. The next visualization is I'm going to add a bar chart. And in fact, I'm gonna use a clustered column chart. So my column chart is going to have an axis of month name. And what it's going to show is gross sales and profit per month. So I'll drag gross sales under values and also profit under values. And you'll see what happens with this chart is that it shows the bars clustered, so side by side. You see the profit for the month and the gross sales for the month, so you can compare them. So that's what I'm going to have for this page is it's gonna show the country, profit and gross sales, and it's gonna show the gross sales and profit by month. Now this is going to be a drill through page. This is not actually my main page, but it's my secondary page. When the user drills through to this page, they're gonna drill through by country. So under fields, I'm gonna drag country under visualizations to add drill through fields here. So that will make this by country as a drill through target. So the next thing I'm going to do is add another page. So I'm gonna click the plus at the bottom for new page. And I'm gonna double click the page name and I'm gonna call this one units sold by country. Now this page is going to have one visualization on it, a pie chart. And the legend for this is going to be by country. So I'll drag country from fields onto legend. And the values are going to be units sold. So units sold per country. So if I hover over one of these, you see Country Canada has sold roughly 247,000 units. Notice it also says right click to drill through. So if I right click, I can choose drill through. And because I gave a drill through field on profit versus gross sales, I can drill through to it. So when I go to that, it'll show me Canada. There's also a little back button at the top left. And if I click control and click that button, it'll take me back. So that's the functionality I want. Notice that if I go to a different country, drill through to this country, it's United States of America. So it's contextual to whichever country I use to drill through. So that is what I want. So I'm going to go back to my units sold by country. And we're going to publish this report, but before we do, we're going to make it look a little nicer. So if I go to the top menu and I choose view, there are options for different themes. 
I'm going to choose a dark theme for this report. So I think this looks a little nicer. It's dark themed with white text. And you see my other page, that looks a little sharper. Okay, so there's different themes. You can actually download themes and you can expand this by adding new themes. Now another thing I want to show you is that there are many different types of charts. So here on the profit versus gross sales, I'm just going to highlight the bar chart. And I want to show you we have different options of visualizing this data. So this is one nice way, which is the clustered bars. I could also choose to do a pie chart. And what that looks like is that every grouping of gross sales and profit make up a color section of the pie chart. And it's also separated by a line by profit and gross sales. So that's one way you might want to see it. Another way you could do is an area chart. And this is actually a nice way because you can see the blue is the gross sales and the orange is a profit. So you can compare profit versus gross sales. So there's different ways you can view this and it doesn't change the values at all to just choose different ways and take a look at what it looks like. So I can choose a ribbon chart. I can choose different types of column charts. Now I'm going to leave it at the clustered column chart because I think that one works the best. Now what I want to do is I want to hide this secondary page because I don't actually want the user to be able to choose this secondary page profit versus gross sales. I want them to have to go to profit versus gross sales from the unit sold by country via drill through. So I'm going to right click on the tab for this screen and click hide page. And it shows a little eye with a cross through it on profit versus gross sales. That means that when I publish this report, the user is not going to be able to go to this page simply by selecting it. They're going to have to go through other means, which is in this case, drill through. And the last thing I'm going to do is choose my unit sold by country as the active page, because I want this to be my default page. So if I save this with this page selected, it'll become the default page. So I'll click publish and click save. And I'll just save this as demo. And I'll choose my workspace and click select. And it says success. So I can click open demo.pbix and Power BI. So here's my report. And you see it opens up on the first page, the page that I chose to be the default page. And if I right click on any of these pie sections, I can choose drill through and go to profit versus gross sales. I can also select different months on the bar chart and I can see the profit and gross sales gauge change because it'll change context. Another option I have is view as table. If I right click on the bar chart, I can choose show as a table. And so the bar chart information I now see as a table below. So sometimes that can be useful to see the data in tabular format. And at the top left, I can click back to report. I also have the option if I select any month, if I right click on any month, I can choose show data point as a table. That shows me every row of data that that data point represents. It's a sum of all of this data, gross sales and profit. Click back to report. So in conclusion, Power BI offers many rich visualizations, and you can also extend it by importing new visuals. Visuals can make your reports attractive, as well as help you highlight relevant data trends. Power BI is a suite of tools and services that work together to allow you to visualize your data, making sense of it from a business perspective. It allows people in your organization to collaborate regarding the important data trends. In this video, I'm going to go over the Power BI workflow. We'll discuss the following steps. Getting the data from the original data source and cleaning the data. Modeling the data. Asking questions of the data to tease out the value. Visualizing the data in a manner that shows the business value of that data. And finally, combining those visualizations into a report that can be shared in the organization. So let's talk about the first step of the Power BI workflow, getting and cleaning the data. 
These two steps go hand in hand because they're often done simultaneously. Power Query is a language for manipulating data that's built right into Power BI Desktop. You can use it to connect to a large variety of supported data stores and import the data that you want. Some examples of data sources are Excel, text files such as CSV files, or on-premises SQL. Power BI contains connectors to these and other data source types. Once you've gotten the data via a connector, you want to clean the data. And Power Query can also be used for this. With Power Query, you can do things like transform the data, change data types, and filter for the precise fields you're interested in. Power BI has a powerful user interface for writing your Power Query, or you can edit the M code, which is the language of Power Query directly. It's worth noting that if you're using Excel, it also has Power Query built right in. So you could also clean your data in Excel before it arrived in Power BI. Once your data is in Power BI and cleaned, you need to model it. This means creating relationships between the tables of data, much like you do in a relational database like SQL Server. In fact, any relationships in a source SQL database should be automatically picked up by Power BI by default. Once the relationships are imported, Power BI Desktop has a visual editor that allows you to modify them if you need to. The next step after modeling the data is asking questions of the data. Here we're talking about querying the data to get the data results we want to display in visualizations in a report. Power BI uses a language called DAX, which lets you transform the data in your model into the result sets you need. It's a language that is also used by Excel. An example is the Power Pivot add-in for Excel. The Power BI desktop application lets you create DAX transforms from your model, either graphically or by manually entering the DAX expressions. Think of these DAX expressions as views into your model data. Once you have the views into your data defined by DAX, it's time to visualize the data. Power BI comes with many visualizations out of the box, such as line, bar, column, and pie charts. You can also visualize via data tables. If Power BI doesn't have what you need, you can code your own visualizations. This gives you the freedom to create whatever you need. Before creating your own visualizations, you should check the Office Marketplace visualizations. These are visualizations created by others and offered either free or for purchase. Visualizations are the building blocks of your reports. You build your reports by adding visualizations and modifying the visualization options to your requirements. In this way, you create a report, which is really just a collection of visualizations laid out across one or more report pages. Then you can publish your report to the Power BI service in the cloud. And this gives you the option of sharing the report with other Power BI users. You can also embed your reports into other web or mobile apps if you want to share them outside of the Power BI environment. So with so many options on how to deploy your reports, plus an extendable platform that allows you to build your own visualizations, Power BI is designed to fit just about any business case. Power BI is a powerful platform for sharing report data in your organization. And as a sharing platform, security is of utmost importance. In this video, I'm going to go over the security of Power BI and its administration. I will cover overall Power BI security and architecture, security around data storage, how user authentication works in Power BI, service security, meaning how security of Power BI content, such as reports and dashboards, is managed, and how transport layer security, or TLS, is supported by Power BI. So first, let's take a look at the overall security and architecture of Power BI, or in other words, how requests to the Power BI service are handled from a security perspective. The Power BI service runs on Azure, so inherits the Azure security stance. 
When requests come to the service, they're intercepted by the Azure Traffic Manager, or ATM, which is responsible for balancing traffic among different regions. Static content is served via Azure's Content Delivery Network, or CDN, based on region. The service has a Web Frontend Cluster, or WFE, that manages identity authentication for requests. Once authenticated, requests are handled by the Power BI's backend cluster, which serves the content like reports and dashboards based on permissions. Once the caller is authenticated, Power BI uses the on behalf of flow, creating an identity that works on behalf of the caller and has the gateway role allowing it to interact with the Power BI backend. Any data that is uploaded by the caller, such as a data set for a report, is stored and managed in Azure Blob Storage, which acts as the user-facing storage medium. Roles are assigned to the on behalf of identity according to what the request is. For example, if the request was to view a report, the on behalf of identity would be assigned the presentation role, giving it the appropriate permissions. Power BI keeps its internal data separate from the user uploaded data in an Azure SQL database. By using the on behalf of identity flow and separating user data from internal data, Power BI practices separation of concerns, which is a good security practice. For user authentication, Power BI uses Azure Active Directory, or AAD, which is the standard security authority for the Azure platform. Under the hood, the authentication uses a user principal name, or UPN. In Azure Active Directory, that is often a work email address and is authenticated against an on-premises Windows Active Directory if your Azure Active Directory is synchronized to an on-premises network. Some directory synchronization or mapping may be required if the user principal names in your Azure Active Directory and in your on-premises Windows Active Directory are not the same. That is, you didn't use your on-premises email accounts as user principal names in Azure. Security at the service level, that is security over who ultimately has permission to view and edit data, is managed by role assignments in Power BI. But it should be noted that ultimately, it's up to the users to control what data they share. For instance, a user in Power BI can choose to share a report containing data that the recipient would otherwise not have access to. The user who is sharing the report is implicitly granting the recipient access to the data. In other words, Power BI will not typically check the permissions for the recipient. One notable exception is connections to SQL Server Analysis Services using the on-premises data gateway. In this case, the recipient's credentials are actually checked against the on-prem Active Directory before access is granted. And finally, when using the Power BI desktop application on-premises, to publish reports to the cloud. Note that the TLS version allowed on the Windows instance via the setting of the registry keys and provided by the Microsoft S-Channel provider are respected by Power BI Desktop. In other words, the TLS version used for publishing reports from the application will be the same as that allowed by the machine it's running on. So in this course, we've examined Microsoft Power BI. We did this by exploring Microsoft Power BI data optimization, loading data sets and creating dashboards, paginating and publishing reports in Power BI, using interactive reports in Power BI, using visualizations and workflows, and Microsoft Power BI security and administration.